good. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We got it. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We're getting back to some kind of normal. The kids now in Sunday school, but we don't want it to be too normal. Praise the Lord. We we want it to be abnormal. We want to be like Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Hallelujah. Excited about what the Lord is doing. And, uh, chances to to see God move and operate in our lives. I just want to share something with you. This morning when I got up, I was talking to Suzanne about this earlier, her and Mike. I was up early about 4 o'clock this morning, which has been kind of a consistent thing here the last few weeks, and uh, praying, and I was just talking to the Lord, and I was asking some things, and a lot of times he doesn't answer me immediately. You know, it's not like I'm talking to you and I say, what's that? And you tell me immediately. Sometimes God just waits because he wants me to focus a little bit. But I just want to say this. In Matthew chapter 9, verses 10 through 13, Jesus said uh, that night Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to be his dinner guests along with his fellow tax collectors. How many of you know they were hated? and many other notorious sinners, not just run-of-the-mill sinners, we're talking about notorious sinners. And the Pharisees were indignant. Why does your teacher eat with such scum, they said. Jesus replied, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. The message translation for verse 13 says, Jesus responded and turn with these Pharisees and he said go figure out what this scripture means I'm after mercy not religion I'm here to invite the outsiders not coddle the insiders yeah. might give us a whole nother perspective yeah. about having church yep. what church really is amen we all got crap yep. and we know it yep. that's why we're here yep. if we all had, were perfect Jesus wouldn't have had to come. We wouldn't be here. There wouldn't be any need for any of this. But we're all flawed human beings, every single one of us. They may be different flaws, but God doesn't measure the flaws. He just says everybody comes short of the glory of God, and we need the grace of God. That's the only hope for any of us, period. And thank God he gave us a hope that is greater than anything we could have hoped for ourselves the answer to every situation and every circumstance in our lives and the lives of everybody that we come into contact. This is the message this world needs because they're all flawed. They're just like us. They're all screwed up. And they need hope. And he is the hope. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Give him another hand clap this morning. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I said, uh, when will the little snake arrive? I said, I don't know, but it won't be long. Did you hear about the baguette at the zoo? That was bred in captivity. Okay, Sally, it's coming back to you. She said, what rhymes with orange? And I said, no, it doesn't. <laughs> okay, so apparently you're not in the mood for any of this this morning. It's too bad. I get, see, I'm here, so I get to do that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go to the Word of God this morning. We'll start with, uh, I want to begin with Hebrews chapter 1, or excuse me, Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 3. Through C. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's that ancient Greek coming out of me. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Praise the Lord to begin with. And, uh, I just want to uh, welcome everybody that's joining us on Facebook. We love you, appreciate you being a part of the service, and you certainly are. And we, uh, we just enjoy having you with us. And I, th I want to thank all of you uh, that are not here in person, but you're still supporting the church and, and doing so much to, to, to be a part of what uh, God is, is doing in this, uh, this, the midst of us. And, and we, we really do appreciate it. And I want to thank uh, Mike and Suzanne for everything that they do. 
And I mean, if you don't know what they're doing, just wait till they take a weekend off, hallelujah, and you find out in a hurry. Thank God for them. I'm glad they got a chance to get away and enjoy some Jimmy Buffett time, hallelujah, and oh, that's the Florida Keys, praise God. I'm just as jealous as I can be. Forgive me, Lord, but uh, no, they, they're a great couple, and we appreciate them so much and their ministry, and uh, they're a real blessing. And Tammy this morning did a great job again, and uh, so it's, it's so cool how this happens, and I'm gonna, you're going to see a lot of the things I'm talking about this morning, and I didn't know what she was going to talk about. I had no idea. And I don't uh, do uh, podcasts, I, not because I wouldn't like to, but because I'm too stupid to figure them out. Hallelujah. But anyway, uh, so there's so much that we'll share this morning that is uh, in sync with what she was saying. And uh, I'm grateful to the Lord for that. So Hebrews chapter 11, uh, beginning at uh, verse 1, and we'll read through verse 3. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things, what? You don't see. Amen. For by it, the elders, those that went before us, obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, that sounds like an oxymoron, but it's the truth. What God created didn't exist in the visible, in the natural realm. It all existed in the spirit realm. But he had to speak that unseen into the scene. And he says, we are people of like faith. He's a God of faith. We have to operate under those same principles. And if, if the church isn't seeing the manifestation that we want to see, it's because we're not doing things the way God intended us to do it. So let's skip down to verse 17, and we'll read verses 17 through 20. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac... And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. Praise the Lord. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth it or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, plural, as of many, but as of one, yes. and to thy seed, yes. which is Christ. Yes. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. The law didn't come until 430 years after the covenant that God made with Abraham. Yes. Amen? And so it can't undo what that covenant existed for, the purpose for that covenant. The law cannot do it because it already existed 430 years before. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. So the promise that we're operating in today isn't based on the law. The law had nothing to do with it. Amen? We are under the covenant of Abraham. The promise. And that's how we are to operate. Amen? Not by the law. Not by religion, not by rules and regulations, but by the promises of God. Amen? So, the thoughts of our mind affect the way that we live. How many of you can say, yeah, that's yeah. true, praise the Lord? They come from one of three places, those thoughts that, that operate in us and that uh, affect the way that we live. The first way is through the five senses, in particular, the eyes and the ears. And we see or hear something in the physical world, right? The second way is from the subconscious mind, i.e., I talked about this here a couple of weeks ago, remembered experiences, things that we've already gone through, and so we develop a, a, a way of thinking based on some past experiences, amen? amen? And number three, from the spirit world. So these are the three ways that uh, 
our, our, our mind is affected and then thus creating uh, the, the lives that we live and the way we, we respond to situations and circumstances. So here's the deal though. Based on this truth, we've got a limited view of any situation. I don't care what it is. Regardless of how experienced we are, regardless of how mature we are, no matter what those things are, we could be, you know, 100 years old and have all sorts of experiences, or we could be 50 years and have all sorts of these experiences, and so on and so forth. We only see the outward appearance. Amen? That is a sensory view. Amen? And what we see or perceive is through our biological senses. Amen? That's where it all starts. Amen? But that is not the whole picture. Remember, Jesus, I'm looking out here and seeing faces, and I know all your names, and I can say all that. And, 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 but he, Paul said, I would that you see Christ and him only. Yes. Right? Yes. He said, well, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing Sally. Yeah. No. I'm seeing Sally with my biological eyes, but I have eyes to see, yes. amen, that can really see beyond the natural, and that's telling me that's Jesus sitting yes. there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. Because what we see is not the whole picture, obviously. Right. Right. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. What, is, what was Tammy saying? We need to be looking to Jesus. We need to be looking to something beyond what it is we're looking at here in the natural. So, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. Right. They're subject to change all the time. And we know that because we've all seen the changes take place in our own lives and right. lives of people around us in the country and in just about anything and everything. Right. They're temporary. But the things which are not seen, they're eternal. Right. They change not. Right. Man, I want some yes. unchanging stuff, yes. right? I want something that isn't going to fluctuate, right. that isn't going to hop up and down every time That's if we get right. a different president or, or yes. some other issue comes up yes. or whatever it might be, amen? I want some consistency yes. in what I'm looking at, praise yes. the Lord. So since our facts are obtained from our sensory view, what we see here and feel, the whole truth is simply not available to us in the natural in the flesh, you're not going to get all the truth no matter how much you try to reason it, no matter how much I, your IQ is, no matter how brilliant you are, no matter how hard you work at it, you're not going to get all the answers just in the natural. It's impossible. Amen? And on top of that, we have the issue, amen, of the devil. Amen? A deceiver. Amen? Who, who's wanting to mislead, dilute us, and discourage us. Amen. He takes our sensory perceptions and twists them. That's the only thing he's got. He can't touch us in the spirit. He's got to come for the natural stuff that we're looking at and doing and feeling and so on and so forth. So he twists those natural sensory perceptions and he magnifies them to meet his purpose. Yep. Yes. To get us so freaked out or focused on that that we forget it's the invisible that we're really looking for. That that's where we're going to find the answers. Praise yes. the Lord. This is a lie. 90% of what we're seeing and experiencing is, is BS. It is. It is. Sure, you know what that means. Yeah. It means it's not true. Right. It's something other than truth. Yeah. Amen? Right. So Revelation 12 and verse 9. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Yeah. Which what? Deceives the whole world. Yes. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Look at the Revelation 20, verses 2 and 3. His, his whole life, that's everything about him, is deception. Yes. He is a liar, the father yes. of liars. It sounds like the truth because that's all he does. Yeah. He's true. well practiced at it. True. So he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So the truth is actually the reality that lies behind the appearances or what we're seeing in the natural. The truth is not that. The truth is behind that, beyond that. Yes. Praise the Lord. So we've got God's spirit. And he is the spirit of truth. God and truth yes. cannot be separated. It's like God and love. They're, they're one. That's his, that's his identity. Yes. It's not just an attribute. It's who and what he is. Amen? Yes. He has perfect vision. 
spiritual vision because he's a spirit. And he's not subject to the seen. He is influenced by what is seen. Right? What did he say when he created everything? He said, well, it's chaos. It's all this mess. But he said, light be. He wasn't influenced by what was in the natural. He was speaking to that temporary thing to bring the supernatural and the permanent. Yes. Amen? So he's not subject to the seen. He has what you might call insight. Yep. In beyond yeah. the natural. Yep. In beyond the, the visual. Amen? He knows truth. Yes. Praise the Lord. So that's all he speaks is truth. Now, anything else we, we're listening to is subject to change. It may be a fact today, but the facts we knew that I knew in the 50s and 60s when I was a kid growing up are no longer factual. Right. Right. The truth is still the truth, although we may not have known the truth then. We had some facts, and we thought that was the truth, but it wasn't. It was just some facts. The facts change with time. The more truth you get, the, the, the more the facts change. But the truth remains the same. And that's God. That's how he knows the end from the beginning, because he's not confused with the facts. He's operating only in the truth. Praise the Lord. So let's look at this, John 16 and verse 13. John 16 and 13. Albeit when he, the spirit of truth, that's God's spirit, come to the earth, the Holy Spirit, is come, he'll guide you into all truth. Well, he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, coming from the Lord, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Yes. Amen? Not what you're looking at. He's going to show you the supernatural. He's going to show you the spirit that's to come. Praise the Lord. So most of our problem is the human nature or the, the flesh and the natural sensual way of thinking. That's the thing that we struggle with more than anything else. It's the thing that sets us up for every failure. shall not do after all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. For you, now look at this, this is a, a fascinating. For the reason why, you're, you just do things that seem right in your own eyes, in your natural eyes, in other words. You're, you're operating based on what you see naturally, and what you hear naturally, what you feel naturally. Everybody does that. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. Because you're not yet as, as yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. Now that translation is actually, you have not yet come to the victory and the possession of God's promises. So you're, that's why you're still looking at everything from a physical perspective, because you haven't come to the place where you are really understanding, I already have the victory, praise the Lord. I already have possession of the promise. Amen? And if you don't have that, you have no choice but to operate in the natural. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6. All we. What do you say all? all? That means everybody. Praise the Lord. All we like sheep have gone astray. Not some of us. Not a few of us. Not three-fourths of us. All of us. Everybody. All of us have, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, to his own reasoning, yeah. to what makes sense in the situation I'm dealing with. Right. Amen? And the Lord hath laid on him yes. the iniquity of us all. Yes. So Jesus got the blame oh, for us not operating by the Spirit. Yes. He didn't do anything that was no. not spiritual. All that he did was spiritual. Yes. Right. But we don't. Right. Well, we get the benefit yes. of him being in the spirit, yes. and he got the benefit of us being in the flesh. Yeah. He took that. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Amen. That's the natural flesh man. That is who we are in the natural. Amen. Yes. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. John 5, 
gente. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. Now he's talking about the natural man, the physical part of Jesus. He can't do anything. The Son can do nothing of himself, not in the flesh, not in the natural. But what he sees the Father do, what does he see in the Father do? He isn't seeing anything in the natural. He's seeing in the Spirit. He knows what the Father does based on the Word of God. He's operating by faith. What he seeth the Father do. For whatsoever things so, soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. So the Son is saying, I'm operate, whenever I operate in who I am physically, I'm, I'm missing it. Mm -hmm. So I can't do that. I have to look to the spirit side of this, what God's saying, what God does. And that's what Jesus said. I only do what my Father does. Yes. I only say what my Father says. Yes. In other words, he said, I'm, I'm only going to operate by the spirit, not by my natural abilities, but by the spirit of God. Yes. Amen. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 16. God's trying to get us to be what we are, which is spirit. We, we live in a body, you know, we're, we're, we're flesh, but we are spirit. That's our identity. The other thing is just a vehicle. It's just what gets us around and makes us legal here on planet Earth. Amen. For who, who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Okay. Naturally, who knows more than Jesus? You know you're going to fix him? You're going to get it straightened out for him? And you're going to think long enough and get smart enough and read enough scripture that you're just going to be able to know? But here's what he says. We have, why? Because we are spirit beings, we have the mind of Christ. We have a spirit mind if we would just focus on it. If we'd make that the focus rather than the natural. Amen? All right. So senses contradict the spirit. Right? It's obvious. They're not compatible. The senses conflict with the spirit. So let me just let me give you an example here. Abraham's greatest moment is this very contradiction of sense and spirit. He said, God said, take your son, your only son, yeah. Isaac, and offer him up as a sacrifice. Yeah. Now, let me just tell you, any suggestion that that was an act of sense is crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. That had to be an act of faith. Yeah. Nobody would do that you know, nat naturally or Sensually, just using your own senses, somebody should kill your kid. Yeah. No. In the natural, you're going to say, <laughs> "This is my child," and in this case, my only child, the one that you said is going to be the one that brings on all of the the nations to me. So it couldn't have been a sense thing. It had to be by the spirit. Amen. It was a contradiction between spirit and flesh. Yes. How about Jacob? Jacob, deceiver, mm -hmm. right? Sneak, manipulator, right? And he gets breakthrough in prayer. The result is him being named Israel. God with, you know, Jacob is natural. Israel is a spirit. Praise the Lord. God had an intended destiny that could not manifest until after this all-night wrestling match between the flesh and the spirit. Until that spirit dominated, God could not bring about the manifest destiny, you might say, of Jacob. Jacob had no way in God's green earth to accomplish what needed to be accomplished. He had to be changed to Israel. He had to become spiritually minded in order to do what it was God had determined to be his destiny. Yes. His destiny would have never happened without this change, without this contradiction being resolved. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. How about David dancing in praise? His own wife said, look at that idiot. Yeah. He's out here dancing around here naked. Well, he wasn't naked, but he had stripped off his, his robes, his royal yeah. garments, and he's just shouting, having yeah. a Holy Ghost fit. Why? Because and everybody's saying, what is wrong with this guy? I'll tell you what's wrong. He just moved from the natural to the spirit. He was operating in the spirit of God. And he didn't care what anybody thought it looked like. He knew in the spirit, this is pleasing to God. I'm showing God how much he really does mean to me. Amen. Even at the risk of others thinking I'm nuts. Right. 
Praise the Lord. How about Isaiah? Isaiah was a prophet, man. And God said, who will I send? And he said, woe is me. He could have said, well, all those idiots are the problem. Because I'm your prophet. You called me. You know, I'm on, I got this thing. No, he said, woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. He had a revelation. Yes. He had a, a, a spiritual understanding that, hey, we're all messed up here. Yes. We all got a problem, and we need yes. the Spirit of God to move in our lives yes. for us to get past it. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. How about Daniel? Man, we think of Daniel. I mean, God, this guy, he, he was dreaming dreams and, and, and having visions and and interpreting dreams and doing the miraculous. And he had to go on a three-week fast to overcome his flesh. Yes. So that the Spirit of God could move in yes. his life. Yes. Praise the Lord. The flesh had to be dealt with. The Spirit had to dominate. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. How about Hosea? How about that deal? I mean, how would you like that? Very prostitute. Yeah. And she comes, she gives you a couple of three kids, and then she goes back to prostitution. Yeah. His heart was broken. Yeah. It took yeah. a spiritual revelation for him to understand that God had chosen this woman yeah. to show him Israel. Yeah. Flawed. Mm -hmm. Sold out to anybody that comes along. Whatever idolatry, whatever next God shows up or whatever it might be. He had to come to a place where he would say, I still love you, Gomer. Yeah. I still want you back. I'm coming down here and I'm going to buy you off the auction yeah. block when none of these guys want you anymore. Right. You've right. lost your appeal. Right. Yes. Yes. What did Jesus do? He, he moved from the natural to the spirit. Yes. He stepped into a, a type of Christ. Yes, he did. Who, who bore, took us, purchased us in, while we were yet sinners. Yes. He died for us. Yes. That's the difference between the natural and the spirit. We, we can go through the motions of church all we want to, but until we're willing to make the commitment to be the people that God calls us to be, all we're doing yes. is playing church. Yes. We're no better than the most religious people on the planet. That's right. the truth. Right. And that's what God is trying to get us yes. to understand. This isn't a, a rules, a regulations. I'm not trying to make people feel guilty. I'm trying to get us set free yes. so that we can be what God has called us to be so that God can do what God wants to do yes. in all of our lives. Yes. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Now, this is about as fundamental as it gets. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He was God in the flesh. He could have had it all. He could have done anything. He could have, you know, but he, for the joy, for what was coming, not what he, had, what he was going to have to go through was horrendous. But for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him. Think about this. If you want to talk about the, the contradiction of, of, of spirit and flesh, this is what Jesus is revealing to us. Because Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself when he didn't do anything. Lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. He understood it, and he was willing to take the physical... Because knowing that the end result was going to be the spiritual promise that God had given. Yes. That not only would he live again, but so would we. All that believe in him. All that trust in him. In spite yes. of what our lives look like. In spite of what we might think we are. Right. Romans 15 verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. This is what Tammy was talking about, right? Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Yeah. Hope in the word of God. Yes. Hope in the unseen. Yes. In the spirit, right? Not what we see in the flesh. Not what's natural. But what the spirit is saying. Now, I'm going to be bouncing back and forth here from 
uh, Genesis 26. So, but I want to start at Genesis 26 and verses 1 through 7. Praise the Lord. And I think what Tammy was saying will begin to kind of echo here again. This is talking about Isaac. There was a famine in the land beside the first famine, not the same famine that his father went through, but there's another famine now. That was in the days of Abraham, not the same one. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. So here in verse 1, it's basically Isaac is operating in the scene. He's operating in the flesh. He's operating in lack. Why? Because he sees there's a famine. That's what he's focused on. There's a famine. Not the one your dad went through, but another one. Like the one your dad went through, there's another famine now. You're going to have to deal with it. Amen? And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Now go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Now God is trying to move him from what he's seeing mm -hmm. and thinking and feeling into the spirit. Mm -hmm. Sojourn in this land, and I'll be with you. It's a famine. I know. I know what you're telling me. I know. Oh, help me. Oh, God, what am I going to do? There's a famine. No, God said, I'll bless you. For unto you and unto your seed, I'm going to give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham your father. So he's giving me promises. Yeah. And I'll make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thee, or to thy seed, all these countries, and thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. God's still giving him promises. He's trying to overcome this natural way of thinking, right? He goes on, he says, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, and my statutes, and my laws. He's saying, you know why Abraham got what he got is because he operated in the spirit. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't let the natural overwhelm him. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Now, we'll show you how much Isaac got out of all this spiritual speaking. The men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, she's my sister. Right back into the natural. Yeah. God's giving him all these promises. And he said, oh, oh that's not my wife. Uh, that's a friend of mine. No, that's a, that's a, my sister. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's scared. Because it says, she's my sister. For he feared to say, she's my wife. She's my wife. Lest, said he, the men of the place would kill me. Because Rebecca was fair to look with. So God's giving him all these promises to get him out of this famine mentality. And after all of the promises God gives and all of the influence and all the promises and all the spiritual encouragement he gets, what does he do? He says, uh-oh, these guys will kill me if they find out I'm married to her because they want her and they can kill me. Yeah. So he's still right back down in the same mess he was in before. You think, okay, well, God spoke now. No, whoa, let us have this happen. No, because all it takes is the enemy to come back again and throw something up to you to cause you to believe what you're looking at or what right. you're hearing more than what God has said. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's look at uh, verses 15 through 25. So for all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than I. That actually translates, You're richer than we. It wasn't because he was more powerfully, uh, you know, militarily or stronger. It was because he had so much money, it was embarrassing wow. to the Philistines because he was so wealthy. And they, he alone had more than the entire Philistines had. And it made him upset. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. <clears throat> And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. So Abraham's dead. They're not worried about Abraham anymore. We've got this young kid now. He don't know sick of it. We're not worried about him. We'll just run him off. Yeah. You know, we'll just beat him and leave him. Because he, is, he doesn't operate the way Abraham did. Right. He doesn't have the same kind of faith that Abraham had. <laughs> so Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. Now, if they were, if it was this thing was about militarily, they would have said, okay, yeah, we'll help you dig the wells. You can have them. No, they weren't afraid of Isaac. No. They were just embarrassed because he had so much wealth. Yeah. 
but physically and militarily, that we'll, we'll whip him like a yeah. wimp, you know? And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdsmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours, it's not yours. And he called the name of the well Esek because they strove with him or they fought with him over it. And they digged another well. His, uh, his servants did. They dug another well. Isaac's, and, they, and they argued over fought over that one. And he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove, and we'll get to this in a minute, and then they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboam. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Mm -hmm. And he went up from thence to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared unto him that same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. <laughs> and he built an altar there, and called upon the name of the Lord, and pitched his tent there. There Isaac's servants digged a well. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to verse 26, chapter, excuse me, chapter 26 and verse 3. Sojourn in this land and I'll be with thee. God's talking to Isaac, right? And will be with thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Now here's the bottom line. And the truth is the covenant had always been a mystery to Isaac. He didn't understand it. He, he knew that his dad had something special going on there, but for him, he didn't get it. It didn't make sense to him, right? And here's the deal. The Bible is not history. It's not a, it's not a legend. Amen? It is history, right? It's, it's fact. It's truth. It's not a legend. It's not folklore. Amen? It's not stories just randomly made up. They are the truth that is supposed to bring faith, not just repeated folklore. Right. That's what religion does. It just goes through the motions, but it doesn't stand right. in the faith of it. Right. They repeat it like it's a like it's a uh, you know Aesop's fable. There may be some truth to it, mm -hmm. but it's not biblical. Right. You know, it's just convenient it's conversation. So let's look at Galatians chapter three. Verse 24 through 29. Galatians 3, 24 through 29. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Yes. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we're no longer under a schoolmaster. For you are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. You can say there's neither black nor white. There's neither yellow. There's none of that. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. In Christ, we are the seed singular. Yes. Right? He said, I've given you the promise. Amen. The seed is the, the promise is coming to the seed. Amen. The seed of Abraham. And he said, I don't call that plural. It's singular. It's Jesus. Yes. But the moment we come into Christ in faith, yes. we become one with Christ. Yes. And that promise becomes ours. That yes. seed. We are now that seed. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. So the story of Isaac's struggle to obtain the wells is the story of every generation, amen, discovering the need of faith, amen, to obtain the promises of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Not only the immediate promise, but the covenant purposes of God through us. Yes. For in order for God to fulfill his, his covenant purposes, he needs people that will have faith in what he said. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a lesson for our application. It's a lesson for us to understand. God's talking to us. You're going to have to operate like Jesus. You are in Christ. Those promises belong to you as surely as they do to Jesus himself. Yes. yes. Amen. You were crucified with him. Yes. Right? You were raised with him. Yes. We should live as Christ does. Yes. And he's not talking about living like 
flawless lives. He's talking about living by faith in what God has said, not what we're seeing. Right. What did Jesus? He said the the the, the, the magistrate said uh, we're gonna we're gonna beat you senseless, and then we're gonna crucify you. And Jesus said, look, man, I know what you're saying, but all I have to do is call yeah. on my Father, and I have legions or yeah. thousands of angels here yeah. just like that. Yes, I know what I have access to. Right. What's going to happen is I'm going to yield to the natural so that my people can operate by the Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. See, there's a call on us in these last days. To redig the yep. wells. Yes. Our spiritual fathers left us. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. There's one battle after another concerning those wells. That's what we're going through right now. Yep. We're trying to get back to the truth of God's yep. word. And the enemy don't want us to. Yep. I don't care who your daddy was. I'm talking to you now. Yep. Right? I mean, that's what he's saying. Yep. You're going to have to show me some stuff yourself because I'm not impressed. He's gone. There are they're that great cloud of witnesses looking at us wondering, yes. will they? Will they finish yeah. what, we, what we started? Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. So there's a battle, and it's at one yes. after another concerning those wells. Mm -hmm. Because it's really about the revelation of God's intended purposes for us today. Yes. Not just about what Abraham did, what Isaac did hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Yes. The fulfillment. Amen. Genesis chapter again, 26 and verse 20. The herdsman of Gerard did strive with Isaac's herdsman, saying, The water is not yours. And he called the name of the well Isaac, because they fought with him. Essek means to quarrel, to argue, to fight. Mm -hmm. So he named it. Just a big brawl, just a constant battle. Trying to get what actually belongs to me. Yeah. That was handed down to me with the spiritual father that came before me. Right. And then verse 22, or excuse me, verse 21. Comes to another will. Didn't get that one. They're fighting all the way. Telling me it's not yours. You, you don't have a right to this. You don't have a right to the promises of God. You don't have a right to this. Who do you think you are? Yeah. Yeah. And they digged another well. And they fought over that one as well. Mm -hmm. And he called the name of it Sitna. And Sitna means enmity. Mm -hmm. Or opposites or against each other. Amen? Mm -hmm. But here's the key. You resist the devil. And eventually, he'll flee from you. Yes. So we come to verse 22. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. They'd had enough. And he called the name of it Rehoboam. And he said, for now the Lord hath made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in the land. Amen. Rehoboam means spacious fruitfulness. Spacious fruitfulness. Yes. Yes. And the truth is, it's always gained through the struggle of faith. Yes. It doesn't always happen the first time. Because he's going to fight it. He's going to tell you, no, you don't get this. You're not having it. I don't care. I've, we've been through this before. You're not going to get it. Yes. And it may happen again and again. But if you keep pressing yes. and keep believing and keep doing yes. what God has said to do, eventually the devil's going to just say, okay. You've resisted. I can't handle this anymore. Right. I'm out of here. Right. And the result will be yes. spacious yes. fruitfulness. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yes. Glory to God. But it comes through the struggle of faith. Yes. To think it just happens. We get up one day and what? Well, isn't that wonderful? Yes. No, there's a battle involved. That's right. Look at Mark chapter 4, verses 14 and 15. Mark 4, 14. The sower sows the word. And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan immediately comes to take away the word that was sown in their hearts. You confess, and immediately the enemy comes and says, oh, come on, give me a break. Who do you think you are? I know your stuff. I got, I got a record of your history. I know your business. And you think? operate by the 
your spirit with your history? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're not looking at who I am. Right. You're looking at who I was. Yeah. I'm a spirit being. Yes. I have the power of God myself. Yes. So he says, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Then look at uh, verse 32, I think it is. Yes, verse 32. But when it's sown, if you sow it, if you say what God says, if you stay focused on that, operate from the spirit perspective, amen, that seed will grow up and become greater than everything that you imagine. It will be greater than even what you thought you were going to get when you started sowing it. It will be even greater, amen. And it shoots out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of that seed. That must that little tiny seed that was just a word yes. in faith becomes gigantic. Yes. It, it covers everything. Amen. It becomes that great. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So look in, in Genesis chapter 26, it records two appearances of the Lord to Isaac himself. Amen. The first one is, is in uh, chapter 26, verses 2 and 3. If we can go back there. Genesis 26, verses 2 and 3. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell, tell thee of. Now, he's, he's dealing with the, the famine and what he's seeing in the natural, right? God said, Don't, don't, don't let that do dictate you. Don't yeah. let that dominate you. Sojourn in this land, and I'll be with you, and will bless you. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto your father, Abraham. Yes. Amen. So, praise the Lord. This, uh, the appearance of the Lord. The covenant here is being transferred or transmitted to Isaac. Yes. Yeah. God is telling him, here's your purpose, Isaac. This is not just about getting some stuff. This is the purpose that I placed you on this planet yes. for. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. And so what happens? What, what's happening here? The seed's getting sown. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right. Between verses 2 and 3 and verse 24, the enemy comes for the word. Yeah. Right? God's told him, this is your destiny. This is, this is your purpose. I don't care what you're dealing with. This is what I called you for. Yes. So from that point until verse 24, what happens? The enemy constantly coming after him, coming after him, coming after him, quarreling, right. fighting, you know, opposite, taking this. You can't have it. No, it's not yours. Yep. Right? right? Then the second time the Lord... Uh, uh, appears is verse 24. Yes. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night, and he said, I am the God of Abraham, my father. Fear not, for I am with you. Yes. It's no longer about your father. Now it's about, this is about you. Yes. Amen. Yes. And will bless you and multiply you and see for my yes. servant's sake, for Abraham's sake. Yes. For what he started, if you'll yes. pick it back up now, It'll be for yes. you. It'll be your destiny now. And I'm doing it because of the promise I initially made with him. Now it becomes your promise. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Isaac immediately builds an altar. A mustard seed. Yeah. And this confirms it's now his promise. Not just his father's. Not just a second hand promise now. Right. It's his. Yeah. And he digs another well on the spot. Mm -hmm. Here's some revelation for us today. Truth is wrapped in the struggle itself. Yeah. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. It's waiting to be manifest to or in anybody who will let the Holy Spirit birth it yeah. in their own life. Yeah. It's there, yeah. but you have to receive it. Yeah. You have to take it by faith. Yes. We're joint heirs of salvation yeah. through Jesus Christ, yes. the seed of Abraham. Praise the Lord. The father's word of promise to his son that he shall inherit the nations is ours. Yeah. It's a shared promise. It, it has become ours. It was passed down. It now is ours. Yes. As though there weren't anyone else. No. Yes. Just like it was for Isaac. See, the sands of history, the, the, the history itself in the hands of our enemies have choked the foundations of living water. Mm -hmm. The devil's used everything. He's used religion. Yes. He's used governments. He's used anything and everything yeah. to rob us of our purpose, to rob us of our destiny. Yeah. And 
that is the secret to the church's fruitfulness and effectiveness, is to keep digging. Yes. To keep coming back. Yes. To keep saying, if it was right for them, it's right for us. Yes. If God will bless them, he'll bless us. Yes. He wants to make it new. Yes. Talk to Suzanne. He wants to make it fresh. Yes. It's not new. It's not a new. It, yeah. it wasn't new what he was telling Isaac. It was just fresh. Right. Yes. It was for him now. It was no longer for dad. It wasn't yeah. no longer for the generation before. Right. It's now yours. Yes. It's a fresh revelation yes. for you. God. Yes. And that's where we're at today, that's church. Yes. I'm not worried about the book of Acts. No. There's a fresh revelation yes. that God wants to pour out his spirit yes. on all flesh today. Yes. Sons and your daughters yes. will prophesy. Yes. We'll lay hands on the sick. We'll see them recover. Okay. And greater works than these will you do. Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. If we, as heirs, pursue those original wells of blessing and power, yes. God will not only reward our pursuit, but will confirm His word all over again yes. to us personally. Mm -hmm. For us, as though it were the first time. But it's simply a refreshing of the promise he gave. Yes. Now, personally, yes. and powerfully. Yes. Psalms 87, verse 7. Praise the Lord. Psalms 87, 7. As well the singers as the players on instruments shall be there. All my springs are in thee. Mm -hmm. Chapter 42, verse 7. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. To experience Jesus. the promises and purposes of God in our lives, we have to take them personally. Mm -hmm. And we have to look beyond the sense realm with spiritual eyes. Amen. Yes. The Holy Spirit is drawing us to the living springs of God himself. So there in the presence of Almighty God is power. Yes. Broad, unlimited, unimaginable power. Yeah. And the ancient of days, timeless. Yeah. Without time constraints. There's no limit. Yeah. It's not like if you don't get this done in 22 years. Yeah. No. It's whosoever will. It's whoever will step up and start digging the wells. It's for right. them wherever, whenever, and however. Right. Praise the Lord. And there we found, at that place, the fountain of living waters. Praise the Lord. John 7, 37 and 39. John 7, 37 through 39. What is this? Jesus said, you know, on that great day, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried and said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yes. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Mm -hmm. He's saying, come to me. What I'm offering you is God life yes. and truth. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. The promise hasn't changed regardless of what we see in the natural. Mm. In your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. And the way to that is the same. Redig the wells. Yes. We have to receive it personally. Because ultimately, it's the quest for God himself. Yes. It's more than just a thing or just a moment. This is actually reaching God. Yeah. Becoming one with him spiritually, yeah. not naturally. Right. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. About that, praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done, is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. No. Right. Chapter 3, verse 15. That which hath been is now. Yes. That which is to be hath already been. Yes. And God requires that which is past. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. 
centuries passed, millennia passed, but nothing is different. No. Nothing new is promised. No. Only something fresh. Yeah. Even the new wine hasn't changed from the beginning. Look at this in Genesis chapter 49, 10 and 11. scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Binding his foal into the vine and his ass's colt unto the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Mm. You don't put new wine into old wine skins. Matthew 13, verse 11 through 16. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it's not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. We have. We have the promises. We have the history. We have what our forefathers, mm -hmm. spiritual forefathers did. We already have it. Amen? Yes. And because of that, we're given that same thing. Praise the Lord. And he shall have more abundance. Yes. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that that he has. Look at religion. Yeah. It's what we're seeing everywhere. Yeah. Giving it up, just throwing it away. Yeah. Therefore speak I to them in parable. Because they see, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart and with their spirit should be converted, and I could heal them. Mm -hmm. But blessed are your eyes. Everybody say, we're blessed. Yes, blessed. We're blessed. Yeah. blessed are your eyes, for they see yes. in your ears, yes. for they hear. Yes. We have a destiny, church. Yes. All we have to do is dig another well. Yes. Just, just dig one more well. Come Amen? On. And if that one, they run us off, we'll just dig another one. Yes. And eventually yes. he'll say, I'm sick of fighting these people. Yes. I'm tired of contending with them and they yes. keep coming back for more. I'm, I'm done. Yes. And the next thing you know, we got lots of room yes. and every blessing of God. Yes. Pleasures forevermore. Yes. We get to be the ones that that great cloud of witnesses goes, that a boy, that's what I've been waiting for. That's what I was hoping for when I was there. Praise the Lord. And you just picked up the gauntlet. You just took it another mile. You just went a little bit further and gave us what we've been praying for and believing for all of our lives and for the lives that came after us and after them and after them. Some generation gets to be the one that digs that final well and gets the outpouring of God. And I believe this generation is that generation that will see this last day revival, the end time of God's outpouring of His Spirit in a way that no one has ever seen before. It's the fulfillment. It's the, it's the, the compilation, if you will, of everyone who has gone before us. It's not just what we, That's why it's such an abundance because it's not just us. It's everyone who sowed before us yes. who didn't get to reap the harvest. True. That grain of mustard seed that had been planted and planted and planted, all of a sudden, we get to be the ones who see it grow up in this huge, yes. huge plant yes. that literally becomes the end time revival. Amen. The revelation of God himself in yes. this earth. Amen. In the face of all of those who are looking and looking yes. and looking and not seeing except for a handful, a remnant that will see through the eyes of the Spirit and receive everything that God has promised. That's our, yes. that's our opportunity. It's ours. All we got to do is be the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. God bless you all. Appreciate your patience this morning.
Have a great week. Keep a shovel in one hand. Amen. And the word of God in the other. Yes. Praise God. Amen.